Hello, teachers. Welcome to this uh, webinar. I am very happy to be with you today. My name is Jacqueline Arguello, and I am an academic consultant for Richmond Publishing. Today, we are going to uh, talk about my own project. We're going to talk about the tools that it provides. And we are going to explore five ideas to work uh, with my own projects, especially when we are working uh, from home. Uh, remember that with my own projects, teachers can create custom assignments that include books, graphic organizers, writing activities, quick assessments, and much more. Um, before we start, let's take a look at a short video about the tools that we have uh, available during this webinar, and um, then we'll begin. Welcome again. Okay, teachers, this is your control panel. The first icon opens and hides your control panel. Then we have a microphone. That microphone indicates that we cannot hear you because it's in red. If the microphone is in green, then it means that we can hear you and we can hear everything that is happening around you. In order to avoid microphone feedback, I am going to mute everyone. But uh, if you want to say something or if you want to uh, share uh, something, click on this little hand here. So I know that you want to uh, interact with us. I will unmute you and you will be able to speak. Uh, another very important section as well is the handout section. These uh, handouts are for you. Feel free to download them. Um, they are going to be useful in your, in your practice uh, for these projects on my own. And uh, of course, if you have questions, please submit them uh, by using this box. Uh, all comments are welcomed. It doesn't have to be necessarily a question if you want to uh, give us a general comment, you are welcome to do so. I will be very happy to read you. Uh, from time to time, I will be launching some polls. In that case, you will see a screen like this one. Uh, in order to make this as interactive as possible, please participate and choose the option that suits you best. That's it, let's begin. Okay, so let's begin with our first idea to implement projects on my own. Um, but before we start, let's launch a quick poll, okay? So uh, you will see in a moment a uh, poll. Please participate and let me know your ideas. Uh, this is the question. The question is, how anxious or concerned do you feel about teaching grammar online? Please let me know how you feel. This is a free space where we can share thoughts, no judgment. We all feel somewhat um, nervous about this situation that we are facing. Okay, I can see that some of you feel, or most of you feel somewhat anxious. 
Okay, very good, very good. Not all of you, that's great. Um, and not um, all of you feel very comfortable, which is total, totally understandable. It's, uh, it's a very um, unusual situation for us. I understand. Okay, I'm going to close the poll right now. And I can see that 50% uh, of you or so feel somewhat anxious. 27% uh, of you feel very anxious and 18% of you uh, don't feel anxious at all, which is great, cool. So what I want you to do is uh, please, for, for the ones that um, answered very honestly and uh, for all of you who said, I feel very anxious, uh, this is a space to share ideas. Hopefully, uh, we'll help each other during this transition period. Um, and for the ones who said, um, not at all, I feel very comfortable, great, because we will be taking advantage of your expertise and of your ideas as well to enrich this collaboration. Perfect. So this first idea is to teach grammar with my own. And why not vocabulary? So um, uh, let's take a look at a video that I prepared for you uh, to implement this uh, grammar teaching with my own. Okay, for this first example, I will use thumbs up to unit eight, and I will focus on the grammar point when what were who plus present simple. So let's suppose that in the next couple of weeks, I will be teaching my students WH questions plus present simple, and they are second graders. So, what can I do? Well, uh, my own is going to be very helpful for this. Let's see. First, I have to go uh, to my search section and I will type the general topic. My specific topic is WH questions, of course, but if I go that specific, I might not find anything. So I will go with the general topic question or question. And let's see what, what I have. Okay, 224 books. That's not bad at all. So now let's see what books or book is going to help me. Uh, I can see some of these are really interesting. However, I have to take into account that I am teaching second grade. Uh, usually second graders have a very low lexile level or their lexiles are not that high. So I will uh, try to use a book that is not beyond their comprehension possibilities, of course. Uh, I think these ones are okay, although I'm not sure. Um, I want something so specific. Mm. Remember, in this part of WH questions, I want my students to understand the structure, yes, but I also want my students to understand me the meaning and the use of that grammar structure. Uh, if they end up learning only the structure, it's not going to uh, work because um, that's not how real life works, right? So I need my students to learn the meaning and the use. Let's see, this one looks like a good candidate. It says that it's for kindergarten students and uh, up to second level or second grade. So I think this is going to work. Um, let's read it. Why we ask questions. In science, we ask many questions. Why is the sky blue? How do birds fly? The questions we ask 
help us learn more about the world. Curiosity is important. A curious person asks questions and looks for answers. Why do dogs pant? Why do rabbits hop? Curiosity helps us learn. I think this is just the right book. Why? Well, because it has the structures that I want my students to learn. And second, because it shows the meaning and it shows the use. Let's go back here, right? Where it says, in science, we ask many questions. It's giving them one possibility uh, of why we use questions with simple present. So this is the perfect book. Now that I've decided that this is the book that I want to use, I need to determine what I expect my students to do with the book. I want them to read the book, of course, but I also want them to work with the book, to interact with the book. I want my students um, working with it and um, interacting. So um, what I'm going to ask them to do is to, first of all, to recognize the structure. In order to do that, they will have to Okay, teachers, I can uh, see that some of you are experiencing some problems um, when you're watching the video. So worry not, what I am going to do is that I am going to uh, do it here right with, with you. Uh, exactly what I was explaining in the video, I am going to explain it again now, okay? <clears throat> So let's uh, see, as I mentioned before, what I want to do is to practice grammar, okay? I want to practice with my uh, grammar structures. And of course, in order to do that, uh, I need to check out my scope and sequence. Let's, let's suppose that I want uh, to teach unit eight with thumbs up second grade, and I am going to teach the structures when, what, where, who, plus, present, simple, okay? Uh, so these are the structures that I want to practice and I need to focus on three things or three main aspects. First, the structure, of course, but also I want to focus on my uh, use and the meaning, okay? Because uh, as I mentioned before, in real life, they are not going to be speaking by patterns. They will be speaking by uh, context, meaning, and use. So I need to find a book that helps me out with these three parts of language, the structure and the meaning and the use as well. Okay, in order to do that, uh, I am going to see Okay, I will go to my own. And I am going to select a book that can help me with this. So for example, let's, uh, my grammar point was uh, WH questions plus simple present. I am going to click on the search section and uh, I am going to start uh, searching for books. On my own, the easiest way to find books is by typing 
by typing the most general topic. My very specific topic is WH questions, of course, but my general topic is questions. So I'm going to type questions in general to see what's going on. And I have a total of 224 books. That's a great result. I am going to check out what books are uh, useful for these purposes. Uh, I can tell by the covers of the books that some of them are too high for my students. Remember that when preparing a project, the first thing to take into account is uh, the average lexile level of your students. Um, so uh, if you know the average level, then you can find the best uh, books for them. Uh, in this case, I think this one, asking questions and finding solutions, is going to be a very useful one. Uh, why? Well, because I have uh, here that this is for uh, kindergarten students up uh, to second graders, uh, which suits me perfectly because I am teaching some sub two. And I have here that the lexi level is not very high. It's 320 lexi, which is perfect. Besides, I think this book is going to help me out a lot. Why? Because it is related to science. Um, and this is going to help me give them an extra. What extra? Well, they will understand the meaning and the use not only the structure or the pattern. Okay, good. So let's see what it, this has to offer. Let's see if this is the book that I am uh, looking for. Okay. Very good. So I think this is just the right book. Why? Because I have what I'm looking for. I have the structure that I uh, want to teach, and I also have meaning and use. I have the use. Why we ask questions. In science, we ask many questions. So I have the use over there, right? This is one of the many possible uh, ways to use WH questions for uh, simple present, of course, with science. Um, so now what I'm going to do is to think or to determine what I want my students to do with the book, because it's not only about reading the book, but also uh, we want them to work with it. We want uh, our students to interact with it. So uh, what I'm going to do is that I will ask my students to recognize the pattern. Uh, the first thing to do uh, to recognize patterns is to use uh, a color coding system. And uh, my literacy tools are going to be very helpful with uh, um, that purpose. So I am going to ask my students to use a, a color coding system the color coding uh, symbols or system is going to be determined by me, the teacher. Uh, and I will ask my students to uh, use red. They will have to highlight red in red the WH question. In yellow, the um, auxiliary. In blue, the subject and in purple the verb okay now um what if there are some words that my students don't understand or that they cannot um uh, that they're not familiar with 
okay, no problem, because that's exactly what I want. I want my students to increase their vocabulary and I want them to enrich their uh, language. Uh, so what I uh, uh, will ask them to do is, um, you have here two options, depending on how many scaffolds your students need. The first option is to pre-teach vocabulary. In this case, you would have to read the whole book uh, and you would have to determine what, uh, what are the words that your students don't understand uh, to do a vocabulary pre-teaching. For example, I think that my second graders uh, will have problems with pants, okay? Maybe that's a word that they don't know. So I have to pre-teach that. With the projects, I can do so. Uh, or another option is to include in the task the, uh, an assignment where they have to um, look up the words that they don't understand by using their uh, my own dictionary. That's another option as well, okay? So um, uh, in this case, we are going to uh, see how to implement the project. Okay, let's see. I am going to click on exit. And of course, I will go to classroom. I will go to projects. I know the book that I want to use because uh, I previously uh, searched for, for the book, but of course that if you don't know, you can start a project from scratch. So I am going to create the project. Okay, and I am going to uh, write on the title. Maybe the title would be uh, just very straightforward WHH questions in for present. Okay, uh, this is an optional um, uh, due date. If you want, to give them um, a due date, that's okay. If you want to uh, leave it open, that's okay as well. I suppose that in this case, when we're working from home, uh, it's uh, better if we set a due date. Um, in this case, uh, remember that if you want to share your projects, you can mark them as shared. So uh, teachers all over the world can see your projects. Now, uh, for my reading task, uh, I said that I want this uh, about asking questions. So the title would be reading one or book one, you can decide. And I can find my books directly here. Or if, for example, uh, I, um, I don't want to do this step, I can directly add it to my bundle or to my list and add it to my project later on. Uh, in the handout that you have available, there's a full explanation of how creating projects and how assigning books, etc. Uh, so now that I did this part, I selected asking questions and finding solutions because that's the book I'm going to work with. Uh, I can write here the task objective, read the book and pay attention to the questions. I mean, I'm doing this kind of fast for uh, the time limit that we have, but of course that you can elaborate a little bit more. Uh, and now I am going to use my all-purpose task. This, this task is amazing because I can transform it. I can do whatever I want to with this all-purpose task. And um, for my 
title, I will write literacy tools. And here's where I'm going to ask my students to highlight. Highlight in green. Uh, how, how was it? No, in red, the auxiliary, the WH question. In yellow, the auxiliary. In green, the subject, and so on, right? I can write on and on exactly what I want them to do. Remember that with my own, you have the possibility to see what are the, uh, you, are, you have the possibility to see what they are doing with the book. You can read as a student, you can read a copy of what that student is doing with the book, and you will be able to see if they actually highlighted what you wanted them to, to do. So it is an amazing tool to help you monitor and follow up your students' advance. Okay, so now that's all I want to do with this. Ah, of course, and I want them, I almost forget, dictionary. Look up the words you don't understand. That's an option. Or another option, if I want to scaffold a little bit more, if I don't want my students to look uh, up um, the words because they are very little, they are very young, uh, I can add an all-purpose task that is not going to be a task, it's just going to be uh, a place where I can write. And uh, I can write unknown words. And I can do my pre-teaching here. Hand. Okay. Meaning. Um, a pant, uh, and I can give them a definition, an example, etc. What I would like you to take from this, um, from uh, here, is that this all-purpose task can be used in many ways. You can use it for your students to create things outside of the platform, or you can simply use it to write and to give them instructions. Uh, that's an option. Another option is in the reading task uh, itself, you could, for example, right here in task objective, read, uh, you give them the instruction and you, you do your vocabulary pre-teaching, okay? It, it only has, uh, it depends on how you want to work. They will see absolutely everything that you are writing. So don't worry uh, about that. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to stop a little bit to um, check out if you have questions and to read some of them before going on uh, with the next activity. Uh, it says, um, how can we create our users? Okay, I will leave that question uh, at the end because um, right now we're focusing on how to create projects but I, I will tell you at the end, but a uh, quick answer, you cannot create your own users. Um, your uh, Richmond Publishing has to create them. Um, then the due date doesn't mean that it is going to close. No, it does not mean that it's going to close. They, they are able to do, the, to do the project if they want to. However, for you, there is a record that the, the activity closed or the project closed that you can take that into account. Then it says, uh, we're working with Skyrocket and Spiral Platform. Is it possible to use my own? Yes, of course, if you, if you hire that uh, service from us, if you purchase uh, a license, it is totally possible. Um, Richmond provides the codes for schools. Um, well, no, uh, there are no codes for schools. Um, sometimes there are, but uh, sometimes we just enroll students. Uh, it can work either way. Um, 
the last all-purpose task you were setting, did you mean students can write in it? No, students cannot write in the all-purpose task. We are writing in the all-purpose task to give them instructions or to ask them to do something extra that is not included in the platform uh, per se. Um, how can I check if the students highlight the words? That's a very good question. Um, I'm going to uh, close this, this project so you can see how to interact with the book uh, and you can see how to check if the student did or didn't do what you asked them to, to do, okay? Uh, I will continue answering your questions. Just a moment, I want to show you uh, this part. Okay, I created my project. I save my project. Mm -hmm. And once that I saved my project, it's going to be inactive. Okay, it's not active anymore. Uh, it's not active yet because I haven't assigned it uh, to any students yet. Uh, in order to activate my project, I need to assign uh, it to at least one student. I will write apply. I will click on apply, sorry, and that's it. I have assigned it to one student. Now it is active, okay? Now it's on my active project. Now, if I want to see if my students worked with the book as I asked them to, what I have to do is to go to my, uh, my project. I will see here my, my student's name. This, this student's name is Juan Demo, for example. And I, can, I click on the name, I click on the book. If it's in yellow, it means that they are still working on the book. If it's in green, it means that they completed it. And just like that, I can see what my student is doing. If you take a look at the upper uh, right corner, you will see that it says you are viewing the book as Juan demo. So I am uh, I am taking a look at everything that he did. This is how you see if they highlight it or not. Okay. In this case, I can see that my student uh, click on the book but didn't uh, didn't study it. Okay. So very easily uh, I can uh, use this projects tool to see if my students actually did what I asked them to do. Okay, good. Now, mo moving on to more uh, complex projects. Um, I'm going to launch a second poll. Okay. The second poll goes like this. How often do you practice writing with your students? Let's see. Very good, you are participating a lot. Thank you very much. Okay. Very good, let's close the poll and let's share it. Okay, so according to this, you, according to this, uh, some of you practice every lesson, some of you, practice once a week and some of you every time you get the chance uh, when working with your book and uh, a few uh, answer that not very often because uh, there's no time. Well, yes, uh, I, I agree with uh, all of uh, you teachers who said that you don't have enough time. Writing is a skill that takes time and we can take advantage of this situation to ask our students to write. 
how well uh, we the project as well. In this case, I am I prepared a project. This project is um, to promote writing and with this idea you are going to uh, find an excuse to write because let's be honest our students are not going to write unless we give them an excuse to write or a motivation or if we encourage them to write they will they will do so but if we just say okay write about your last vacation and that's all the input we give them it's going to be very hard for them to develop their ideas and to write so here what i am doing is that i prepare this project that is uh, how tall are you uh this is um this is uh, uh, what we call a fat question or a or a triggering question uh, as you can see the question is very simple how tall are you mm -hmm. it's super simple but what i am doing here is that i am going to adapt this question and i am going to transform it into a more complex question so they can write what i am going to do is uh, i will ask my students to read the books uh, that i selected for them these are the books that I picked out. Um, the books are Short and Tall, uh, The Tallest Snowman, and How Tall. These three books that you can see here, the last three books, are input, are to give them um, vocabulary, uh, examples, ideas, etc. In this part, it doesn't matter if your Lexi level is below their Lexi level. If you're going to use children's book and you're working with junior high school or with high school even, it's okay. You don't have to worry about that because we are not focusing on, on reading right now. We're focusing on uh, writing. So if the book that you assign is a little bit uh, lower uh, than their Lexi level, it's okay because we want them to have input. Then I included two other books these books are to provide them with writing skills one of them is um be the best at, at writing and the other one is tickles pickles and floofing persnickels reading and writing nonsense poems uh, if i want to make this even more challenging i could ask my students to write a poem a poem about it but first let's see what the task is about no numbers so the task or what I ask them to do is to, um, I ask them to write without using numbers. They have to write how tall they are, okay? So the question is, how tall are you without using any numbers? Uh, so let's see teachers, who wants to answer to that question? How tall are you but without using any numbers how tall are you this is a writing activity but right now let's um let's do it sort of a, a speaking activity who wants to answer to that question let's see uh for example let's choose very quickly Someone, um, some of you had your your hand up. So let's see, Janine, Janine Sierra. Janine, how tall are you, but without using any numbers? Do you have a, an answer for that? Sí. Yes, we can hear you. How tall are you without using any numbers? Muy bien, te entendí, te entendí. Ay, pues sí, ahí andamos, pero bueno. Ok, <laughs> so let's see what you're reading. One of you says, I am taller than my mother. Oh, that's good. That's actually a very good answer. 
Uh, so in this case, they are going to be practicing uh, superlatives and comparatives. Any other? Uh, I am shorter than my boss, okay? Mm -hmm. If we know who your boss is, we will have an idea. But if we don't know who your boss is, it's going to be very difficult for us to, to see how tall you are. Um, I am the tallest teacher at school. Okay, great. Um, I am the short. I am the tallest teacher at school. Okay. Okay. We have one uh, answer. One clever, clever answer. It says, uh, "My height is perfect, but not to be a model." Okay, that's good. So we get an idea. Okay. Uh, so the the thing with this, uh, what I want to share with you in this part is that it's not. Uh, Mayon is not only uh, for reading, it's also for writing. And our students can write and they can write a lot. And we can encourage them to think creative uh, in a very creative way. Um, so now let's uh, see, let's continue. Uh, this is the second idea, writing. I prepared uh, another project uh, with, this kind, with these fat questions. And I will show you the second project. For the second project, the question is, do you have a pet? Do you have a pet? And this is a very simple, easy question, right? Um, yes, no. But we want to improve the question. So in order to improve the question, my um, assignment or my writing assignment was this one. If uh, your pet could talk, what would you ask? If your pet could talk, what would you ask? And Juan answered, if my cat, I suppose that he meant cat, if my cat could talk, I would ask her if she loves me. Oh, okay. So this is another way to transform the question part and to ask them to write. Now for you teachers, the question is for you. If you could uh, ask anything in the world, uh, if your pet could talk, what would you ask your pet? What would you ask? Okay, let's see the answers. Let's see the answers. Why did you bark? Okay, very good. That's an excellent one. Um, how come you sleep so much? Yes, how come you sleep so much and I can't sleep at all? If, why, um, okay, why you left? <laughs> uh, what do you think about me? Okay, well, I'm not sure I want to ask my cat uh, that question. Uh, very good. Well, I'm not sure I want to know. <laughs> very good. Excellent uh, feedback, teachers. Thank you very much. So this is another way to uh, see. I can see that many of you or some of you have questions about how to see what they what they wrote. And right now, what what your students have to do is just they have to write. As soon as they write, they will uh, find. As soon as they write, uh, you will see what they did. Okay, I'm going to show you very quickly. Okay, I'm we learn as a student. Okay. I am logging in as a student. Okay, so let's see here. What my students see. I am going to see my project. Okay, my recommended reading. But then if I go to projects, I have here these projects. Do you have a pet? This is what my student 
cease because I assigned um, a question. So these are the books that they have that they have to read. They have to read books about pets. I assign one nonfiction and two fiction books because we are asking a crazy question, right? If pets could talk. So I am giving them a little bit of input with nonfiction stories and uh, a very and, and a nonfiction uh, book. And this is what they see. If your pet could talk what would you ask what they have to do is to click on writing and they have the instructions over there i wrote the instructions in the writing objective then they have the essay writer where i uh, ask them to write at least 75 words at least um, then and they have the peer review part this is a very important part because uh, i ask my students to peer review that means that they can um, they can submit a review and they can see all of their classmates um, reviews they can see everything so for example, if I have another student here and, and, and he or she wrote something, my, my, their, her classmates are going to see what, what she wrote and they can sub, submit a review. Mm -hmm. They just have to select here and very good writing. Oh, or I loved it or whatever. So they click on save. And that's it. As easy as that, they will be able to send the comments to the teacher and to other classmates. The classmates uh, will see the comments only if the teacher has not deleted the comments. If there's an inappropriate comment, uh, the teacher can erase that comment uh, all, uh, at all times and um, the teacher is the only one uh, accepting or deleting, del deleting comments. You can, as teachers, leave a comment as well on the task. So this is a collaborative and interactive part of the platform. You can say, uh, I need more uh, creativity, or I don't know, I'm very bad at giving feedback, actually. Uh, let's try something less hurtful. Uh, what about a uh, great, but could you elaborate or something like that? Mm -hmm. So this is a this is the part where you can uh, save your comments. Your students will read your comments, and if you mark in your project the option peer review when you have a, a writing assignment, then they will be able to uh, write reviews and comment on their partners or their classmates' work. Where is that checkbox? It's here when I am using my writing task. I ask them to peer review or review their peers. I ask them to review their peers. It's this little box that says peer review, okay? Uh, okay, so now we're, I have more ideas about this. I think we would have to make a second session because I could share with you only two out of five ideas. Um, but you, have, you were great, you had a great interaction. So now what I am going to do is that uh, I'm going to answer uh, some of your questions, okay? Let's see. Um, let's see the questions. Um, how do we correct this kind of task? What tools do we have for that? Okay, the only tool that you have to correct the writing task is the comments, okay? Uh, you can write the com on the comments, you can write 
Uh, I'm not sure this is correct. Uh, remember that the structure is subject, verb, um, complement, etc. Uh, there's no way of editing what they wrote, but you can leave a comment. Um, is it possible to have the rest of the options in a project? Yes, yes, you can, you can use all the tasks uh, that you need uh, to use. Uh, there's no limit for tasks. And can we edit the questions in the project? Um, it depends. The questions, um, if, you, if by questions you mean the questions that you as a teacher prepare, prepare for them to write, yes, you can edit them. If you mean the questions that come at the end of every quiz, no, those are not uh, available for edition. Um, can, how can we assign the students to review their friends at random? Uh, no, no, uh, they will be able to see, if I have five students and uh, I checked the box peer review, all of my students are going to see uh, their group's writings. Anna will see what Marco, Laura, Luisa, and Patty wrote. Uh, and uh, and so on, uh, and they can choose. They can choose what students they want to to review. Um, so what you can do is to ask them. Okay, choose two students or choose two classmates to uh, review their work. For example, uh, is there any way to print the writing tasks? No, there is no way. But that's what the platform is for. The platform is uh, meant to keep the record in the writing uh, because they have a portfolio. That, that word that you're mentioning is very important, portfolio. Uh, students have uh, their own portfolio. I am, going to, I am going to show you. Students have their, their own portfolio. Uh, and every time that I log as a student, there's a part that says portfolio. And you can see all the evidence of their work because we want to use as less paper as possible, right? I know that for teachers, evidences are crucial. Actually, I have more ideas on how to support your work in the platform with evidence. Uh, but let's see, let's suppose that I am here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sign in as a student. And I go to my avatar or to my student options. And I have here a part that says portfolio. Everything that I write, everything that I do, graphic organizers, etc., is going to be kept here safe. They don't need to um, uh, save anything. It's uh, the, the platform keeps the record uh, on its own and it's very easy to keep evidence. Another question, um, in the writing task, can we check the comments similar like a forum or do I have to check the comments one by one? Uh, you have the, to check the comments one by one because there is no forum in the platform. Mm -hmm. So yes, the answer is you would have to check the comments one by one but students can see all at once all all the comments that they've been um, that they have uh, from their peers. They will see all of them. If ten students commented on my work, I will see all at once the ten comments. How can we? Okay, uh, I will answer that later. What's the use of time goal? Ah, okay, this is a very good question. Uh, the purpose of this is to ask our students to invest at least 15 minutes in writing. Why? Because for example, let's suppose that I am a very lazy student. Let's suppose that I am a very lazy student and that I copied from internet, right? I went to Wikipedia and I posted um, um, it. And then I copied and I pasted on on my own well the platform will tell me how much time they spent uh, 
uh, they spent on writing that. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a good way to, uh, to ask for a time goal. Uh, so we can check the portfolio. Yes, of course. Uh, what can you suggest to me if I teach to preschool? Okay, um, for them, it's reading, basically. Okay, reading, 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 reading. Input, 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 input. Uh, don't spec output because they're very young. So input, 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 only reading activity. Um, about the organizers, is that an extra activity that is not included in the platform? No, the organizers are totally included in the platform. Uh, these graphic organizers are a task that you can add. Uh, today I shared with you the all-purpose task, the reading task, and the uh, writing task. But there's an extra task that is called graphic organizers. So you can actually uh, add this as a task as well. Um, Remember that I have a handout for you that explains all of these questions. Um, now it says, how can we give individual feedback for the student with special needs? Well, individual feedback only by commenting on what they wrote. That's, that's it. Um, very good. So, okay, I think those are all uh, the questions. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. I am going to click on the uh, camera so I can say goodbye to you in, in person, <laughs> uh, let's say. Uh, thank you very much for your patience and thank you very much for attending this, this webinar. Um, I know that these are difficult times for all of us, I understand that the circumstances are not the most favorable ones. Uh, however, I tried to put together as many activities as possible for you. I have three more activities left. So if you want a second part, just say so, and we can schedule a second part to review the other three activities. In the meantime, you can check out the handout that I uploaded for you, so you can see all the options and all the possibilities, um, the technical possibilities, and I will uh, give you more ideas. Okay, so just, um, just try to um, stay alert, not anxious, that's praise for, for this period of time, this crazy period of time, alert, not anxious, and I truly, sincerely, deeply want to thank you uh, for all the effort that you are uh, putting in this in these online classes. I know that this is not ideal. I, I understand that this is new for some of us, but I really, really want to thank you because I know that you are doing an excellent work. So thank you and see you uh, soon. Uh, just a quick question, will we, Will we get the certificates? Yes, of course, you will get the certificates if you wrote or if you entered your email address correctly. Yes. Um, and you will have the option to see this webinar on video because I am recording it. Uh, thank you very much. It was lovely to be with you and see you soon. Bye bye.